you go, mate. Cheers. Oh, my one. I'm sure coffee that strong's illegal. Wimp. Morning, Terry. All right, mate. Yeah, right. I better go get ready for work. The boss is a bit of a tyrant. Yes, but he is a genius also. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's going all right for you, eh, mate? Good job. Nice lass. Can't complain. You look like you need a cup of Marlon's famous morning java. Mmm, guaranteed to wake the dead. <laughs> oh, give us a break, eh? I'm looking forward to a nice long kip. Hello? <laughs> yeah, he just walks in the door. Your master's voice. Chris. Well, I, I just finished my shift. I've been up all night. Yeah, all right, all right. What's Chris say after now? Oh, wants me to go back in and do a job for him. Go self-employed, Terry. You can work any hours you fancy. Oh, yeah, yeah. World's me oyster. I don't know why you put up with it, mate. I've got no choice. I need the money. Pass the toast, Donna. Let me make you some more. That lot's cold. Don't bother. It's no trouble. I won't eat it, and neither will Roy. I've completely lost my appetite. Oh. Come on, Kelly, we can't carry on like this. I know what Scott and I did was wrong, but we've got to put it behind us and become a family again. The only family I've got is Roy and Donna, and she's the only reason me and Roy moved back in here, remember? Don't have a go at Mum. It's my fault, and I've tried to put things right. Put things right? By using Donna's money to get yourself off the earth? You've got no shame, mate. Oh, don't you start. Can everyone stop arguing, please? Donna's right, now we're all living under one roof. Thanks to you and Scott. Look, come on, Kelly. What do you expect us to do? Nothing. You've done enough already. Just leave us alone. I don't want you in my life, Scott. When are you going to realise that? Do you know something? That's fine by me. Because you're not worth the effort, Kelly. <laughs> oh, Scott! Just like old times, eh, Viv? I want a word, Sean. What's the matter now? Spending too much on rubber bands and paper clips, are we? There are five outstanding invoices there. They come to the best part of, oh, 12 grand. And surprise, surprise, they're all your old customers. Big deal. I've known these guys for years. They'll pay when they've got the money. I've got a gentleman's agreement. Gentlemen? All cronies and drinking buddies, you mean? Just because you're Billy Nomad. Look, I want it's... these bills paid now. I mean, this one for... For Jackson, it goes back months. I'm telling you, Craig Jackson's good for the money. You better be right. Finish up, everybody. I don't want to be late for work. Are you really working at Cathy's diner? Yeah, I am. But what about Dad? Oh, he'll come round, you'll see. What do you reckon Cathy will say when she finds out Marlon's hired you? Well, I expect she'll be glad of the help now that Biff's gone. Famished. Been sorting out animal feed since five. Breakfast in the oven. Tea's in the pot. Well, you can just help yourself. I don't want to be late for the diner. I'll drop the kids off. Oh, well, that's rich. I have to help myself while my wife goes off and feeds a bunch of strangers. Oh, don't be like that, Jack. Come on, Sarah. You've made your point. Let's leave it at that and get things back to normal. I bet be off. See you later. You don't understand, Jack. Apart from needing the money, yesterday was the first time I've actually enjoyed a day's work. I see. We'll talk about this later. Come on, kids. I know we're a bit short-handed with Frankie being away. Just think of the overtime, all right? Make sure you fill in your timesheets, yeah, lads. Yeah. Pete, can I have a word? What are you doing here? I need some information. About what? Whether or not that Zoe Tate had anything to do with sending my Frankie away. Well, Chris hands out most of the jobs. It must have been him. Are you telling me Zoe Tate had nothing to do with it? I only work here, Maggie. I don't run the place. Oh, see what you can find out. Oh, come on, Pete. I'm a woman in love. You're headed in wrong direction, mate. Very funny. You look knackered. What are you doing here at this I time? I asked Terry to do some overtime. 
You want to get some beauty sleep, mate. Never met anyone who needed it more. <laughs> well, what's this about, then? An extra 200 pounds, cash. This is an outstanding bill for 3,280 pounds that a Mr. Jackson owes us. And? I want you to collect it. Use a bit of gentle persuasion, if necessary. And what if he doesn't have the money to pay us? <laughs> don't be so gentle. Hang on. I don't do baseball bats and knuckle dusters. You got the wrong bloke. Fine. I'll get someone else. But that would mean we no longer had need of your services. What does Sean say to all this? Nothing. He doesn't know. That's the way I want to keep it. Of course, if it came to it, I'm sure I could convince Sean to let you go. What are you doing here? I live here last time I looked. And where's that little girlfriend of yours? Not slipped down the back of the sofa, has she? She's skinny enough. <laughs> <laughs> She's certainly a delicate little thing. She's upstairs in my room. Well, why are you not up there with her? That she's not like that. They want to take things at their own pace. They don't need any interference. Hey, and while she's here, I want you on your best behaviour. Best what? I don't want you embarrassing me. Embarrassing you? How? Uh, Lisa, tell him. You don't want you showing him up in front of Emily. Oh, like by showing them photos of you when you were a baby in your birthday suit. That you wouldn't do. You look pretty as a pitch in your little blue bonnet. Now, where's that Dingle album? Dad! Don't worry, I'll be singing your praises at every opportunity. Right. I'll go and feed the pigs. Right. I'm making breakfast. <laughs> so you can see to bells, that Dingle. Quick, go and have a look at this. What's up? It's not them Reynolds causing trouble again, is it? Hey, calm down, Zach. Morning. I thought I'd do a few chores. I've already fed the dogs. Hey, you didn't have to do that, love. You're our guest. If I'm going to be stopping, I've got to earn my keep. No, no, Lisa, we don't want to dampen the lass's enthusiasm, do we? <laughs> Moving on. There's nothing decent round here, I know of, look. Yeah, especially when you're my age. You can always go back to bar work. Well, the wool pack. Now I burnt my bridges there. Nearly burnt the whole place down, if truth be told. Terry, I thought I gave you a job to do. Lipstick on this one, Tricia. Viv wins as if I'm not mistaken. Vermilion Vixen. We mustn't let standards slip. Right. Well, I'm glad to hear that sentiment, Bernice. I've always taken great pride in the presentation aspect of the whole pack. Well, rest assured, Alan, that's one thing that won't be changing. So what else will be changing, then? We're talking evolution, Tricia, not revolution. Huh? Oh, I still can't believe it, Gavin. In a few weeks' time, you'll be the new landlord. And you will be the landlady of the wool pack. Oh, it'll be like all our Christmases and birthdays coming at once. And Valentine's Day. Oh, can't you phone up the bank, Gavin, as if you can't hurry things up? They said it would take a couple of weeks. You just have to be patient. Oh, I'm trying, Gavin, but it's so exciting. I can hardly contain myself. What are you doing here? You come to cause more trouble? I was looking for Pete. Well, he's not here. He's out on a run. Looks like you've had a wasted journey. Look, Zoe, I'm sorry about the other night. Yes, I'm sure you are. I mean it. Listen, I've got work to do. Zoe! You and I haven't got off to the best start. No, not really. Well, perhaps we could go for a drink. Talk things through. I don't think so. I know nothing happened between you and Frankie in Southampton. Well, it didn't look like that in the wool pack. Like I said, I was out of order. We should try and be friends. I don't know. Come on, one drink. I'll think about it. I'll see you tonight in the woolly. See if they let me in. You, Jackson? Depends who's asking. I take it you are, then. 
Didn't your mother tell you it were polite to knock? And didn't your mother tell you it were polite to pay your bills? You what? Sean knows I'm good for this. Yeah, well, you're dealing with Tate Ollidge now, which means you talk to me. Is that so? Don't do that. You tell whoever sent you that I'll pay when I'm good and ready. I told you not to do that! Now, let's talk about your bill. Things have been a bit tight. I've had problems. Well, if I don't see the colour of your cash right now, you're going to have some more problems. Right, I'll be with you in a minute. Betty, right, which of these do you prefer, right? Traditional hot pot or Bowser chop and mash? Well, as neither of them's on menu, why ask? Things change, Betty. That's progress. You've made more than enough changes here, lad. Well, uh, speaking of changes, yeah, it's time I transform myself from humble chef to maître de par excellence. Three. Well, you came back now. I must admit, I was surprised after Jack had his say. Really? Things not going too well at all. Well, things have been better. I wondered why you took your holiday on your own. Did you know? Well, I can spot the signs, you see. Jack and I just need a bit of space, that's all. Well, if you ever feel the need to unburden yourself. I'm always here to listen, you know. You know, Betty, the one good thing about the farm, you can tell your problems to the chickens and the sheep, and they don't tell the whole village. <laughs> if this bounces, so do you. And expect the balance of Tateology in the morning, in cash. Don't disappoint me. No good to me. Well, it'll just have to be. Don't worry, it won't bounce. It's only for two grand. You're going to get the rest in the morning, in cash. So you found your true vocation at last. I never thought I could sink so low. What's your problem? You just made yourself 200 quid. Oh, I. But I can't tell you what I've lost. What's going on? Nothing that concerns you. I hope you're not up to something behind my back, Chris. Now, would I do something to jeopardise our partnership? I hope not. Cheers. Bill? What's up? You drink? Kelly, this is half. I asked for a pint. Roy, we're on an economy drive. We're never going to get a place of our own unless we save. I know that, but... It's... No buts. I'll ask Zoe for some overtime and you can ask Lisa. Yeah. Mm. And I'll get on the phone, seeing as any DJ work he needs. All right, I'm up for that. I couldn't have taken Donna's money, Roy. Kelly, when I carry over the threshold of his dream house, it's gonna be bought and paid for with his own money, right? Mm. Don't need no handouts. <laughs> ah, table for two, gentlemen? No, just a drink at the bar. <laughs> what are you dressed up like that for? Well, I'm trying to raise the tone of this establishment. <laughs> this way, please. Please, please, please. Excuse me, do we have some service here? You can have a milkshake each and that's your lot. No, wait there and don't be noisy. I don't think we're believing you a tip, do you? Two milkshakes coming up. Can't we eat it, Mum? I'll save you cooking later. Yeah, you'll be dead tired. No, we'll be sitting down as a family, as usual. And Dad'll be in a bad mood, as usual. No, your dad is fine. He's just got a lot on his mind. What are you up to? If you must know, Tricia, I'm planning my space clearing. What? Grandad'll have a fit if you start chucking out his furniture. 
It's not about throwing furniture out, Tricia. We simply realign. There's a lot of stagnant energy in this room, you know. What are you talking about, Bernice? Feng Shui! What's that then? Some sort of martial art thing? No, Tricia. It's an ancient natural science. Here, there's some bloke here chucking handfuls of salt all over his house. He's freeing up his energy channels. And there's some old bird here banging on a dinner gong. Especially good for enhancing your chi. You see, Tricia, by applying the principles of Feng Shui, you can improve your health, finances and relationships. What, you mean by moving a few sticks of old furniture, chucking an handful of salt and banging on a dinner gong, I'm going to pull some rich bloke that's got the odds for me big time. <sighs> don't mock what you don't understand, Tricia. Thank you. Bye. I really like working here. I want you to know I won't let you down again. Look, I'm no stranger to family problems, Emily. I just hope you've got everything sorted out. I'm still worried about me, Dad. But I feel really safe at the Dingles. Emily, you do realise that not everybody's home is like the Dingles. I know. That's a shame. Where are you sleeping, if you don't mind me asking? In Butchie's room. How was he? He's on the couch. Downstairs. Sounds cosy. I'll be in to help tomorrow before the shop fitters arrive. You didn't see anyone hanging around outside, did you? No, street's empty. Emily's staying at the Dingles. Oh, well, I'm sure she'll fit right in. You ready for the shop fitters? Oh, don't remind me. I could have given that 5,000 quid to Kelly and Roy, but now I had to go and spend it on the shop. Mum, Vic was your husband as well as Kelly's dad. You had more rights to that insurance money than anyone. You've just got to accept that we made a mistake. And at some point in the future, you might be able to put it right. Oh, I hope so. Besides, you've got a tasty young shop fitter to look at. Well, Scott, behave yourself. <laughs> Tricia, what are you doing? Uh, don't you know, Terry, I'm practising my Feng... What's the name? Huey. Feng Shui, Terry. Oh, I. That's right, I'm unblocking my energy channels. It's an ancient Chinese art, Terry. Helps improve your life. I could do with some of that. Got a gong, have you? You know, for a young person, Trisha has such a closed mind. Here's a Feng Shui tip for you, Terry. Remember to put the lid down on the toilet when you've been. Otherwise, your fortune will escape down there. You know what? I'm telling you, Tell, she's getting worse. I can't even wind her up anymore. That's because she's taking charge of her life. She's chosen not to get wound up. I mean, let's face it, she's the one that's getting what she wants. Look at us. Roy's a brilliant DJ. He does everything from Cat Stevens to Cat Tonia. Well, his usual price is 70. OK, 50 plus petrol money. We'll see you on Saturday, then. I suppose you think it's funny, me looking for jobs for Roy. I expect you've made a fortune today. A couple of deals went through. Well, me and Roy won't be seeing a penny of it. Still, I'm glad you've got such a clear conscience. Kelly, I have tried to put things right. What we've done is money. I won't be too cocky about that business of yours, Scott, cos sooner or later Rich is going to see you for what you are, a user. Why'd you two have to argue all the time? You're tearing this family apart. Mmm. Whatever she's making, it certainly smells good. Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. <laughs> Shall I go and give her an hand? Oh, no, I will. It doesn't seem right somehow, sitting around in your own home, being waited on hand and foot. <laughs> Which never trouble me. <laughs> oh, I know that of all, Zach Dingle. <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you, lass? All done. Oh. Thanks for letting me stay. Oh, you're welcome, Emily. I thought I saw my dad today. I'm a bit frightened. I keep thinking he's going to turn up and make me go back with him. Oh, it must be difficult for you, love. It is. I do miss me, Dad. Some of us are starving over here. Don't worry, love. We'll take care of you. You're safe here. As uh, long as Zach likes your cooking, that is. Uh. Is that all? <laughs> Just jam roly poly for pudding. Ah. Oh, 
Oh, I think you've got a rival here, Lisa. This is knockout. I got your present. It's a new shirt. So I see. Looks like a day's wages in the diner. It's been a long time since we could afford little luxuries. Well, now you're the breadwinner. Oh, Jack. This isn't just about money. Are we going to be able to talk about this like adults or not? Talk? You didn't talk to me before you took the damn job. I don't want to just be a farmer's wife. I don't know what you want, Sarah. My family have farmed this land for years. It's all I know. Things just aren't the same anymore, Jack. Don't you realise? Are you talking about the farm or our marriage? Happy? What do you think? Be easier next time. There won't be a next time. So the next time you're broke, you mean? Oh, and uh, take it easy on the booze. You start your shift in a couple of hours. <laughs> so who wants another drink? It's my shot. Same again. Yeah. You know, I could get used to this. Boss is getting around him. Uh, another pint, please, Trish. Take one for yourself. Oh, you're doing all right for yourself all of a sudden. It's because you were sat in that chair I fanged up earlier, innit? Do you think it really works, Terry? Lucky on the horses. Dogs. What's your secret? Somebody give you a hot tip. Same again, Trish. I know how much Frankie hates these long old continental gigs. It's all part of the job, I'm afraid. Frankie's like me, you see. Bit of a home bird. All sounds nice and cosy. I don't mind him, he can't help it. I'm glad we've had this drink. You two seem to be getting on a lot better. That's what she thinks. Sooner or later, she'll let something slip. If I found out that spoiled cow sent Frankie away to split us up, I'll have her mark my words. Well, with your winnings and your bit of overtime from Chris, you must be pretty flush. Oh, I. I'm on a lucky roll, me. Well, that's the thing about luck, Terry. Sooner or later, it'll always run out. Not for blokes like Chris Tate, it won't. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Terry. I wouldn't be too sure about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> 